Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Welcome to Abiding Faith Christian Center Sunday morning worship. We are so delighted that you decide to join us on this morning. Pastor Rodney has a word from the Lord for you today, and we want you to be ready to receive. So get your hearts prepared, get your ears tuned so that you can hear what God is saying to you. And those that are watching on Facebook Live, go ahead and hit that share button so that others can hear the word of God. And what we also want you to do is grab your Bible or whatever electronic gadget that you use to access the Bible, grab that because we like for you to see the word of God for yourself. Don't go by what pastor says, go by what God says. And one thing I, I, I love about pastor, he's going to lead you to the word of God. So if you're ready to receive the word of God today, uh, let's receive our pastor, Pastor Rodney Hamer. With me right now, say, this is my Bible. It is God's word that tells me that my faith is only limited by the word inside of me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Today I will hear his word. I will believe his word and I will act upon his word. Therefore through my faith I will pursue, I will overcome, and I'll recover all that the devil stole from me. Today, my life shall never be the same because of hearing God's words. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So I had a little bit, a little bit in that confession. Uh, today my life shall never be the same because of hearing God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God's solution for a successful New Year's resolution. We said in the beginning of this message, it is a known fact that it is insanity to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Yet many Christians, many believers do it every year and wonder why they're not getting different results in their lives. They have not progressed spiritually, physically, socially, or economically. And for some, they have become, listen, worse off than they were before. So we want to make the decision to do something different in the year 2022. Can you say amen? I made a decision, I'm going, to, I'm going to do things different than I did in 2021 so that 2022 will be a more successful year than, 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 than I had in 2021. Thank God for the success I had. But there are some improvements I know that I can have for the year 2022, but it's going to be based upon me doing something different or maybe doing something more than what I've done before. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes you may be doing the right thing, you have done the right thing, but maybe you need to do a little bit more or something more than what you've been doing to take you up to another level. Amen? Amen. Maybe it is in your education. Maybe you, you graduated from high school. Uh, maybe you had two years of college. Maybe you need to go get and get to uh, where well, you can get four years, have a four-year co uh, college uh, 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 degree, what have you. Amen? Like some people get a degree out of college and stuff, and then they go back and they get their master's degree. We have a couple of our daughters, they've done that. They got their master's degree. Uh, sons, uh, uh, um, 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 nieces, nephews, which has done it. Amen? Amen. In fact, one of my granddaughters is here this morning, praise God. Uh, she's she's going to be graduating from high school before her time because she put a little bit extra. She paid, she paid the price, amen, so that she can go on further with her education. So we're just so proud of her, praise God. I, I don't want to embarrass it, but she's sitting over here on the right-hand side over there, you know, so praise the Lord. Amen. Now, you remember we talked, we gave you two things that we must do that the Lord put in my heart to share with that you must do so that you can have a successful New Year's resolution. Number one, we said forget the past year's sins, failures, mistakes, and emotional hurts. It is imperative that you forget the past because the past is what it is. The past is? The past, the past is? The past is? The past, man. When it's past, you can't do, you can't do anything about it. It's past. 
And you ain't no use to crying over spilled milk or scrambled eggs. Once you scramble the eggs, once you once you break open that egg, brother, that's it. Amen. Once the milk spilled, that is it. All you can do is just wipe the milk up. That's it. You can't you can't listen, you can't undo the spill of the milk. It's just out there. Amen. And so the same thing about the past failures, past mistakes, past sins. And what you do is you make a decision, whatever caused the past failure, whatever caused the past mistakes, whatever, whatever sins that you committed, stop doing what you were doing so that you won't put yourself in a position to commit that sin again. Change. Say change. Change what you've done before. And then we said number two was decide to control your mouth. What you say concerning your present circumstances and the say what you say about your past circumstances. Oh, how I failed in the past. Oh, how many mistakes I've done. Oh, if I wish I could have had a done. And all the things we say and we put ourselves down. And we say, well, what's the, well, the devil put thoughts in your mind. What's the use to going on? I messed up so bad. Listen, quit saying those words because when you speak words out of your mouth they paint images in your mind they paint Im images in your thought life see words are somatic in meaning they convey thoughts or ideas so you need to change the words that you say out of your mouth then we talked about number three we said be obedient to God's word which is not God which is his number one will to bring the manifestations of the blessings of Abraham we saw in the book of Joshua, the chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein both day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. See, what you do prior to the prosperity and the good success is vitally important. And that is we have to make the time to make the word our daily food. Because God, Jesus said, or God says in the book of Deuteronomy, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus turned around and repeated the same thing, didn't he? Amen? When the devil tried to tempt him about turning stones into bread, he said, it is written, thou, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, uh, that man shall, not be, uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Well, that's a truth that comes from God's mouth that's revealed to us. So we must make the word of God our daily bread. We must meditate upon it both day and night. Why? He said, so that we can observe to do. So that we can observe to do. So that we can observe to what? Do. Observe to do. You remember the other illustration that said faith is hearing, believing. Faith is what? Hearing, believing, and acting. That's what faith is. Well, observe and do. <clears throat> and the only way you can be able to observe is you got to be looking. Amen? You, you, listen, if you're not observing, then you're not going to know what to do. So you must observe. He said meditate and then dead, meditate both day and night to think about it, ponder on it. You know, like you do with your cares and your worries. Right. You know about that. You know, how, you know how you do that, right? Everybody know about that. How many know about what you do with your cares and worries? Yeah, I mean, you ponder on it. You meditate upon it. You roll it over and over in your mind. You go to bed and you sit in bed and it's all of a sudden you just a thought come up in your mind and you just try to figure this out and, and then sometimes you, you just imagine the worst case scenario and you, and you definitely can't go to sleep now. That's called meditation. When you're constantly meditating upon the, the bad, the negative thing. Amen? Well, we need to change that and start thinking of the positive and meditating upon God's word. I can do all things to Christ that strengthens me. My God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God said if I would ask, it would be given to me. He said if I seek, I would find. He said if I knock, the door would be open. He said if I be a natural, know how to give good gifts unto my children, how much more shall he give good things to me simply because I ask him? Not because I dot all my I's and cross all my T's. Simply because I ask him. And then he tells me I have to ask according to his will. 
What is his will? Oh, his word is his will. His word says, Jesus says, and whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. Oh, all I got to do is ask in the name of Jesus, and it will be given to me. See, I'm meditating upon God's word. And then I act upon God's word with an assurance, with a confidence in my heart. You see how that works? So we must be, be obedient to God's word. Then number four. We didn't get to number four. We want to get to number four name now. And I think we covered all the areas of number three, didn't we? Uh, we, did we did cover that last week. We did cover it. Okay, thank you so much for letting me know. <clears throat> uh, it says in the book, uh, uh, excuse me, number four says, put God in his kingdom first and he will prosper you. Put God in his kingdom first and he will prosper you. T turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter. And we want to look at verses 25 to 23. <clears throat> Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 25 to 23. Matthew, chapter 6. Matthew, chapter 6. We're going to go to verses 25 to 33. What did I say? Oh, oh, okay. So Matthew's 25, and we're going to, Matthew 6, excuse me, and then we're going to read from verse 25 to verse 33. Now remember, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That's from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelations. God inspired the Bible to be written for instructions and righteousness. Amen? For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instructions in righteousness. So we're going to read some instructions in righteousness of how to do things the way that God wants things to be done. So he says here in, in Matthew, the sixth chapter, and if you're there, say amen. amen. He says in verse number 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. And we talked about weary just a minute ago. That's what Jesus is saying. He's talking about weary, which is really meditation. He says in Matthew, the 6th chapter, verse number 25, Therefore I say to you, now that's personal, that's personally talking to me, but it's personally talking to you. Amen? He said, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat and the body than the raiment? In other words, your, your, your life doesn't consist of just bread and meat and food and, you know, and church's chicken and stuff and what have you. Amen? No, it consists of more than that, even though that stuff is good. He says in verse 26, Behold the fowls of the air, behold the birds of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father, your who? Heavenly your who? Heavenly Father. Your who? Your heavenly Father feedeth them. Them who? Them birds. Them, them birds. Are you not much better than a bird? Huh? Sure you are. He says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit, one inch unto your stature, your height? And why take ye thought? Why worry about raiment, thought for raiment, or thought for clothing? Huh? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They tall not, neither do they spin, make their own, you know, make their own leaves and stuff, and, you know, their little stem and, you know, what have you. Or, or the little leaf, you know, that's up under the flower to kind of give it a little background so the colors of the flower can stand out. He said, the, the, he said, the lilies don't do that. He said, neither do they spin. And then verse 29, And yet I say unto you, that even King Solomon in all of his glory was not arid, was not dressed up as fine like one of these. Verse 30 says, Wherefore, therefore, talking to you and me, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. And verse 31 says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, Ooh, watch your mouth in 2022. Watch what you say. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what, what withal shall we be clothed? 
Then in verse 32, he says, for after all these things, listen to this. For after all these things, I want you to listen to this. I know you're looking at it now, but I want you to grasp what Jesus is saying to you. For after all these things that Christians seek after, do the Gentiles the sinner seek? Because it's, a, it's something that's necessary for life. Right? Now he says, For your heavenly Father, now notice what it says, For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. So God knows what we need on the earth. He knows what you need to be successful. He knows what you need so that you and your family will be provided for. He knows that you need money for the light bill, the gas bill, for the insurance for the car. He knows you need insurance for your, for, for your family, for going to doctors, appointments. He knows you need whatever it is. He knows you need it. In fact, he knows things that you need that you don't know. He knows that you need to lay aside some weights and sins that are besetting you from running, pressing towards the mark of his plan and purpose for your life as a Christian. He knows there's some relationships that you need to server that is hindering you, that's causing you to compromise. You're having too much fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Fellowship with infidels and unbelievers he knows that he knows what you need he said come out from among them doesn't he mm -hmm. yeah he says it in his word your father, heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things he knows what you have need of in life but then now he gives us some instructions in verse number 33 that is absolutely necessary for you to follow in the year 2022 so that you can have a successful New Year's resolution so that you can prosper in 2022 whereas you may not have prospered as much or maybe not at all in 2021. And this is not for a put down. It's letting you know, listen, there is redemption for you. God is a God of the, of the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth chance. God is, God is <clears throat> concerned about you winning, overcoming. He's not concerned about you having failed. And because you failed, then I don't want to have anything to do with you. Men may be like that, but God is not like that. The Bible says a righteous man falleth down seven times, but praise God, he rises up again. A righteous man is one who seeks to do things after God's will, after God's plan. Yeah, we as righteous people, sometimes we miss it. We have this treasure in earth and vessel, but that doesn't make us perfect, does it? Show me, show me a perfect person. Show me a person that claims to be perfect as in the body of Christ, and I'll show you a person that's a big liar. Because there's no perfect. The only perfect man, the only perfect man is my main man, Jesus Christ. Because when he was on the earth, boy, if he, if he hadn't fulfilled all the law, guess what? There would have been no redemption for us at all. Can you say amen? I, I know I'm taking a little side excursion because we got verse number 33, but it still applies to verse 33 because we're talking about doing something different in 2022 so that we can have a successful New Year's. And that is, we have to give a priority to God's word. Now look what he says here. He says in verse number 33, and let's read that out loud together. Those who are here and those who are on Facebook Live or YouTube in the near future that's watching this program, read it out loud, even though this is not the live broadcast broadcasting to you right now. Let's go. Ready, go. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Notice says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be done unto you. Now what is God's righteousness? That's a good question, is it? What is God's 
righteousness. Well, <clears throat> the Bible tells us what righteousness is, and so let's find out from what the Bible says, and let's turn in the Bible in the book of Matthews, the third chapter, and we want to start at verse number 11, and we're going to see here from this historical writing which the Holy God has allowed His Holy Spirit to inspire Matthews to write for our admonition and for our learning. All scripture was given by the inspiration of God, and it will profit us. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instructions. Instructions to tell us how to do something, and it says for instructions in righteousness. So here in the book of Matthew, the third chapter, we read at verse number 11, Matthew's chapter 3. You were over there in Matthew 6, so you're just going three pages back. Right, And so here in chapter 3, verse number 11, we read, it says, I indeed baptize you with water, this is John the Baptist talking, unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he shall thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat unto the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And then it says in verse number 13, it says, And then cometh Jesus from Galilee to where? Jordan. To Jordan unto who? Jordan. To be what? Baptized. Of him. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to, ba to be baptized of him. So that means that Jesus was on an assignment. He didn't go to Charles. He didn't go to... <clears throat> to James, he didn't, he didn't go to Tyrone, uh, he didn't go to anybody else but John when he left Galilee and he got to Jordan, he found, he went purposely to John the Baptist. And why did he do that? Had to be a reason? Well, the Bible tells us. It says he went there to be baptized of him. Didn't it? Does it say that in the Bible? Now you have to understand that this wasn't written here just to fill in space. There was a divine purpose for Jesus leaving Galilee to go to John the Baptist who was in Jordan. Uh, Galilee was kind of like where Detroit is compared to here in Flint. So it was a little distance that Jesus had to travel. And to seek out one individual and one individual alone and that was John the Baptist. And the purpose for seeking him, coming that long distance, was so that he could be baptized. Now remember, Jesus was and is the Son of God. Jesus was, the, was God manifested in the flesh. Without spot and without blemish. Listen, a perfect human being, not one flaw in his life. He's at the age of 30 years old, and not one flaw, not one commission of sin. But he came to John the Baptist, and I guarantee you John the Baptist has some sin in his life somewhere. Now I want to emphasize this because we're talking about <clears throat> we're talking about we're talking about putting God's kingdom and his righteousness first. Putting God and his kingdom first. So let's look at this. And verse number 14. Notice John's response to Jesus when he came to John to be baptized of him. Verse 14, let's read it together. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? That's John the Baptist. He said, I have need to be baptized by you. You come, I know who you are. And he did because he was Jesus' Republic relations man. God revealed to John the Baptist supernatural revelation who Jesus was. And he was going about, he already talked about before Jesus came on the scene. He says, I indeed baptize you with water with re unto repentance, but he that cometh after me, he's mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not even worthy to tie up. And then on and on. He's, 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 
he's, he's, he's publicizing about the Messiah. Are you listening? So here in verse 14, he says to Jesus, he says, hey, I have need of you to baptize me. And you come to me? Uh-uh, I ain't baptizing you. Knows what Jesus said in verse number 15. I want us to read it out loud together. Ready, go. And Jesus answering, suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Now, let me read this in, 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 in here where it says, suffer it to be so now, because that's Elis Elizabethic language. <coughs> Elizabethan language. Old English. It, it's, it's really, this is what it's saying. Allow it to be so now, for it is necessary and advantageous for us to fulfill all righteousness. That's what it's saying. He says, allow it to be so now, John, for it is necessary for us to fulfill all righteousness. I have a question. I thank God for leading me to go to Bible college so that I can prepare for the ministry. I had a desire to do it and was God's desire placed upon my heart. So I deem myself to be one who has a little bit of edumocation. Can you say amen? amen? Somebody said, no, Pastor, I can't say old man because the word's not edumocation. Well, excuse me. <laughs> Education for you <laughs> scholarly erudite people. When you fulfill something, what, is, what does it mean you fulfilled it? You what? You completed it. Okay, we like that. It completed, right? Everybody agree with that? When you fulfill an assignment that's given to you on your job that your supervisor told you to do, when you go to tell him, say, hey, man, I fulfilled what you told me to do, you're telling him that you what? You, you finished it, completed it. Amen? Jesus says, allow it to be so now, for thus or as necessary for us. Listen, he says to fulfill all righteousness. Righteousness? How do you fulfill righteousness? What is righteousness? Well, let's find out what it is by reading the scriptures, you know, preceding this. Verse number 16. I'm going to read out loud. You read silently. Verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, and Jesus, when he was baptized, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, Behold, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And then look at verse number 17. Let's read that out loud together. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Whoa, what was God pleased with? That he would come and manifest himself in such a supernatural way at that point in time in Jesus' life. He was pleased with Jesus fulfilling righteousness. Remember Matthew 6.33? Turn back to Matthew 6.33 then. It's since you don't remember it. Matthew 6 chapter verse number 33. Jesus gives us some instructions. He gives us instructions so that we can have a successful New Year's resolution. So that we can know what we should do in the year 2022 that may be different or even much more than we did in 2021. But he said in verse number 33, he said, but seek ye first. Now first is before second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and to the hundred, to the thousand. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, but not only the kingdom of God, he said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, there that word is again, righteousness. And we found out that righteousness Righteousness means doing things the way that God wants things to be done. And unfortunately, many Christians, some, I said many, but some, a lot, in 2021 did not do things the way that God wanted things to be done. And as a, as a result, 2021 was not successful for them. 
some of them are because they didn't know. But even though they didn't know, that still didn't give them a passing card. Because ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, that's a worldly term. Habakkuk says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of information. And just because you didn't know doesn't mean that you, the effects of not obeying God's righteousness, walking in God's righteousness, the results of not walking in righteousness, you're going to still get the effects of it. Now God didn't put that on you. It's just because you didn't do righteousness. You didn't seek first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things. So we have, as number four, we must put God and his kingdom first, and he will prosper us. We must seek ye first the kingdom of God and his way of doing things. To seek God, put God first, is to seek his, put his word first. To put his will first. To put his will first. You remember the book of John, 1 John 5th chapter, verses 14 and 15? It says, it says, uh, it says, and this is the confidence, this is the assurance we have in him, meaning God, if we ask anything according to his will, he what? He what? If we ask anything according to his will. Well, how can you ask according to his will when you don't know his will? And, if, and, and, and a lot of times you don't know his will because you're not doing the 90-day Bible read through the Bible. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know where that came from, praise God. I'm picking, on, I'm picking on members of Body Faith Christian Center, their, their, their Bible reading assignment. No, because we're not, get, we're, not, we're not getting into the Word, so we don't get in the Word. We can't know what His will is. We can't ask according to His will. Because we didn't put God first. God's will. God's righteousness. God's Word. Because God and His Word is one. We're talking about God's solution for a successful New Year's resolution so that we can bounce forward in our personal lives because, see, you listen, how are you going to set somebody free in solitary confinement, I mean, in, in cell block number nine, when here you are in solitary confinement? Amen. I mean, it's pretty hard to do that, right? I'm locked up in solitary confinement, praise God, and I want to let somebody, set somebody free of cell block number nine. I need to be set free first. Amen? Right. And we can be, praise God. Yes. You know, when I say that, yes. use that illustration and stuff, you got to be set free so that we can reach out, bring out, and change out. Now, I'm, I don't mean you need to have all your I's dotted and all your T's crossed because, you know, we, we miss it here and there. I mean, you got to put first things first. Walk in the light that you have now. Do what you know what you're supposed to do now. For he that knoweth to doeth good and doeth it not to him is what? It's sin. It's sin. So what if you know, it, know that it's good for you to do, what is God's good and acceptable and perfect will of God, do that. And then you'll be able to reach out, bring out, and change out. Right, man? Amen? Which is God's will for you also. All right. Are you blessed by this? Amen. Are you being blessed? When we give priority to God in his word, we are given more importance to it than other things that needs to be done or dealt with first. Let me read that again. When we give priority to God and his word, we're giving more importance to it. Prioritized. His word is prioritized in our lives. More important than other things that need to be done are things that maybe need to be done first. We're making God's word preeminent in our lives. We have to do that. Second Chronicles, the 14th chapter, turn with me in your Bibles right there so we can see some Old Testament scriptures that are written for our admonition and for our instructions in righteousness. Second Chronicles, chapter 14, and we want to start at verse number 1. We're going to look at some Old Testament examples and these principles that were applied in their lives are the same principles that we are or we can apply in our lives so that we can be successful, so that we can prosper, because it is the will of God for us to prosper. Can you say amen? amen. <clears throat> now, I know I'm giving you scriptures, and I, I, I'm giving you more scriptures than maybe you're used to, what have you. 
you know, you on Facebook live, praise God. But see, that's what the Bible talks about when it says study to show yourself to prove unto God and workmen need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you can't divide by just one scripture. You need more than one scripture. Amen. Ooh, I need that water. All right, have you found Second Chronicles? Second Chronicles, C H R O N I C L E S, and chapter fourteen, starting at verse number one. I'm going to read out loud. You read silently with me. I'm going to read all the way to verse fifteen. It says, "And so Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, Asa, his son, reigned in his stead." In his days, the land was quiet ten years. Now, I want you to notice verse number two. In fact, let's read verse number two out loud together. Ready, go. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. And Asa did good, did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. The good that he did was he kept the commandments. The good that he did was he kept the commandments. Are you listening? The good that he did was he kept his commandments. So when it says, and Asa, Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God, it's talking about the only way he could do good was he had to know what good was in the eyes of God. Can you say amen? Amen? Because that's why the scripture says in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 2, he says, uh, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that what? Good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So it's, it's the renewing of your mind with the word. When it said, be not, but be, uh, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You renew it with new information, new knowledge, with truth. Amen? That, that's what you do. So this is what Asa had done. As a little child, evidently because why would they say an Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord as God? Now if he was committing murder and adultery and fornication and, and worshiping idols and stuff, that wouldn't have been good because the Bible, the Old Testament scriptures, the Old Testament law said they, should, they are not to worship no other God but him. They were not to be no idol worshipers. They were not to commit fornication. They were not to commit murder. That's what the Old Testament law said. So in order for them to be able to do good, he had to be doing the law. Can you say amen? All right, so you're there right. Now, look at verse number 2. Look at verse number 2, 14, 2. It says, And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. Now we go into verse 3. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves, which evidently his father, Abijah, must have had left. And he commanded Judah, he commanded Judah to do what? To seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the what? The and the command. So we, he had to be a doer of the law and the commandments because why would he tell them to do something he wasn't doing? Well, you know, people can't do that. I understand that. You know, do what I say and not as I do. <laughs> That's so foolish. Listen, it says, it says, he commanded Judah to seek the Lord, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that all these things can be added unto you. You don't say that, Pastor, but it's, that's what it's referencing to. That's what it's concurring with. Are you listening? And he also took away, verse 5, and he also took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. And he built fenced cities in Judah, for the land had rest, and he had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities and make, a, um, and make about them walls and towers and gates and bars, while the land is yet before us. And because we have sought the Lord our God, since we have sought the Lord our God, since we have sought first the kingdom of God, we have sought him and he has given us rest on every side so they built and prospered. And Asa had an army of men that bear targets and spears out of Judah. 300,000 out of Benjamin that bear shields and drew bows. 204 score thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. And they came out against them Zerah the Ethiopian with a host of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots and came unto uh, Mar Russia. That means one million. Okay? 
That means one million. When it says a host of a thousand, a thousand, that's talking about one million. And then verse 10 says, Then Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephahath, Zavatha and Marasha, and as Asa cried unto the Lord his God, and he said, Lord, now look what Asa did. Asa is praying according to the will of God. Asa did what it says in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, and this is the confidence we can have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. God told the children of Israel if they kept his commandments, if any nation came against them, if they cried unto him, he would, he would stand up for their cause. Now I'm paraphrasing it, but he says when you keep my commandments, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. It's just like getting attacked in your body with coronavirus, omnivirus. Yeah, we're Christians. We're redeemed from the curse of the law. And we should confess that and hold fast to that. And it is true. But that doesn't mean the enemy is not going to come to attack you anyway. But when he attacks you because you're fully persuaded, because you got the word in you, he says, he says, submit yourself unto God. Do what? Resist the devil. And what will he do? He'll flee from you. Now, the reason why I flee from you is because he came to you in the first place. So don't ever get condemned or feel bad or ashamed because you got attacked with something. Oh, no, 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 no. Use your faith and get that joker off of you. Get him off of you. Fight the good fight of faith. And see, listen, you, you're not a survivor. You're an overcomer. There's a difference between a, being a survivor and being an overcomer. What does an overcomer do? What does an overcomer do? Tell, tell me. I told you I got some edge of vocation. But what does an overcomer do? Overcome. He what? Overcome. I mean, what did they overcome what? Any, any trial, any tribulation, any opposition, any attack that comes upon you, you overcome them. Isn't that true? Yes. Yes. You overcome. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of how many? All. How many? All. How many? All. All of them. Woo, praise God. I'm so glad I know the truth. Amen. Yes. 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 Glory to God. You, what was I at? What verse of scripture was I in? Uh, Y'all done distracted me. What verse? <laughs> verse number 11. Because I was associating, associating verse 11 to 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Because it says, And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help. Say help. Help, help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God. Let no man prevail against thee. See, he never said no man wasn't going to come against you. But he will not prevail against you. Listen, look at verse 12. So the Lord did what? So the Lord did what? So the Lord did what? Smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah. And the Ethiopians fled. Woo! Glory to God. Submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil. And he will what? He will fled from you. Praise God. Flee from you. Listen, verse 13. And Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto uh, uh, Gerar. And the Ethiopians were overthrown. They were overthrown. They were overcome. That did not recover themselves. For they were destroyed before the Lord and before his hosts. And they carried away very much spoil. And they smote all the cities around about Gerar. For the fear of the Lord came upon them. And they spoiled all the cities. For there was exceeding much spoil in them. And they smote also the tents of cattle. And carried away sheep and camels in abundance. And returned to Jerusalem. Now I want you to look over in chapter number 15. Which is right next 
text there, and it says, And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Obed, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while you be with him. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he will be found of you, but you, but if you forsake him, if you don't seek first the kingdom of God, he will forsake you. Now I know I'm adding that uh, for Matthew 6 in there, but it's still the same. It's still the same principle. If you don't seek first the kingdom of God, hey, are you listening? Yeah, are you going home in the corner of your mind? Hello? Come out of that corner there. <laughs> and now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without a law. See, they needed the teaching priest and they, need, they needed the law too. Just like you need a pastor too. And you need someone to teach you the word too. Amen? Just, just, just a little side window right there. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of him. I want to drop down to verse number, uh, verse number 19. Oh, where would I want to go? Where did I want to go now? I wanted to go 119. Ah, praise the Lord. Um. I was looking for a scripture where it talks about because it's a whole lot of reading here, and I want to—I don't want—I want to take you through all the reading. Uh, in verse number, who praise the Lord, Holy Spirit, do 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 do. I have—I got here going all the way to verse number nineteen. Look at verse number four. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought Him, He was found on them. And in those times there was no peace to them. To him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexation was upon all the inhabitants of the countries, and nation was destroyed of nation and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversities, and God allowed them to be vexed. And be ye strong, therefore, he says, the prophet speaking to Asa and to Judah, he said, let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Your work shall be what? Rewarded. It's the same thing with you today. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of things, things, uh, doing things, your works will be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Obadiah, the prophet, he took carriage and put away all the abominable idols. See, they had to do something, and you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to lay aside every weight and every sin, sin that besets you. You're going to have to change some things that you did. You're going to have to let go some relationships that are not drawing you to God, but drawing you away from God. You need to get rid of those relationships, brothers and sisters. If that's what's causing you to keep drawing nigh unto God, that he may draw nigh unto you. Because the Bible says, what fellowship has Christ with Belial? What fellowship has Christ Jesus with the devil? None whatsoever. What fellowship has light with darkness? None whatsoever. What fellowship does a believer with an infidel? None whatsoever. Amen? So we're going to have to make some choices, make some, some corrections. And it may be hard on the flesh, but listen. <laughs> Jesus says, he said, it's better to cut up. If, if your hand causes you to sin, he said, it's better you to cut it off than, it, it, than the whole body be cast into hell. <laughs> Amen. And that may be said the hell of the hell of, of sin and all the things that it brings in your life. Maybe not, talk, maybe not be talking about the burning hell, eternal hell, but all the stuff that sin brings. Are you listening or are you going home? Still here? Okay, good. I'm glad you're here. All right, let's read on. Let's read on because he said, sounds like he's meddling, huh? He meddling. Quit meddling with me. Okay, now... Um, Ooh, praise the Lord. I ain't had any. In verse number 12, and they entered into a covenant. Verse 12, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. So you got to seek God with all your heart and all of your soul. And they entered into a covenant 
to seek the Lord God with, of, their father, of their fathers with all of their heart and with all their souls, and that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel, and this way they did it back then, whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. If you don't come to church next Sunday, I'm going to put you to death. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't do that. Oh, no, no, you're in the grace. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't show up for Thursday night, Bible Daddy. I'm come on, I'm gonna come over your house. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill. <laughs> Woo, boy, Lord have mercy. Come on. That's my granddaughter. My granddaughter. She makes me act silly like that. When she, she every time she get around me, she make me act like that. It's Ari's fault. It says. <laughs> Okay, what, what verse of scripture were we in before y'all got to play in? What verse of scripture were we in? See if y'all remember. What verse was I in? Huh? What verse of scripture am I on now? I'm on 14. I just read 13. See, y'all don't be listening to me. Go on to the corner of your mind somewhere. All right, verse number 14. Look what it says. And they swear unto the Lord with their loud voice and with shouting and with tramp trumpets and with coronets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart. With all their what? And sought him with their whole what? Desire. And he was found of them, and the Lord gave them rest around the bound. And you go down to verse number 18, or we go to verse number 17. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect in all his ways, perfect toward God. And he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated, and that he himself had dedicated silver and gold and vessels. And there was no more war unto the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. And simply because Asa, he honored, he obeyed the Lord his God. Now, in the book of 2 Chronicles 26, 1 to 5, it says that as long as he sought the Lord. In fact, let's go over there real quick, and I'm going to do because my time, I got five minutes. I knew I was running out of time. Go to 2 Chronicles 26. You're already in 2 Chronicles, but just go to the 26th chapter right now. And we just got five verses there, but hurry up there so I can bring this to a close. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And what we're learning is that we must put God in his kingdom first. We must seek ye first the kingdom of God so that you can prosper in the year 2022. Listen, my brother and sister, this is real. This stuff is real. And see, with all the stuff going on in the world today, it looks like just all kind of calamity. They're talking about recession. They're talking about war. See, things, I mean, the United States going to war with one of the major countries and stuff. And then China talking about, you know, stepping up its aggression against Taiwan, which is going to require war. All that stuff is nothing but the devil trying to hinder the church from fulfilling this divine commission. Because when you got war, you don't have peace and you can't go about preaching the gospel in all the areas where people need to hear it. Amen? And that's going to affect the economy and everything else. Already got some stuff affecting the economy stuff, but anyway, let me get that. All right, 26th chapter. You in 26th chapter? No. I'm not. I'm, I, well, how come I'm not in the 26th chapter? Somebody turn my page. <laughs> Say, Pastor, you don't want to stand it up there. <laughs> Okay, verse number one. I'm going to read real fast, so just bear with me. And then all the people of Judah took Uzziah. He was six, six, 16 years old and made him king in the room of his father Amasa. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his father. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign. He reigned 50 and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was also Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Am 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 Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long, let's read verse number five together. Ready, go. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to, God made him to, God made him to, because he sought first, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I'm telling you, my brother and sister, it works because the word said it works. But I know it works because it's working in my life. And I thank God for prospering us. But we ain't where, we, we ain't where we're going to be. But thank God we ain't where we used to be. We're going forward. And God, what this happens in the economy, no matter what's happening in society, amen? I mean, it was things happening all around the children of Israel, but God called. He said there was peace all around the border, border of Judah during the time of Asa. But see, God gave them rest. That stuff didn't touch them. Amen? 
I didn't say they didn't try to come against them because the Ethiopians can't try to come against them. They attacked them. One million, one million, a one million man came against them and, and, and they had about 300 some thousand. They were outnumbered, but God made them prosper. God will make you prosper. He wants to make us prosper in the year 2022, but you're going to have to do things God's way. And those of you that are watching this program right now, you may not have know anything about this. It may not make any sense to you, but it does steal your heart. There's a drawing. A yearning in you. And that's why Jesus came. So that he can, he can satisfy that yearning in your heart. That drawing that you're feeling right now. Is God drawing you to him. The Bible said with loving kindness. Has he drawn us. The son of man came to seek and to save. That which is lost. That's what he's doing now. He's drawing you to him. And that's what you're sensing in your spirit. Now the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but the world that Jesus might be saved. You see, God <clears throat> sent Jesus not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. That was his purpose for coming. He came so that you could be saved. From Saved from what, Pastor? Saved from eternal judgment which is for those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. When they die, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. See, there's a judgment that comes upon man as a result of him not receiving the gift of eternal life, not because of his sins, but because he didn't receive the gift of eternal life. See, there's a place called hell, a place of torment that was created for the devil and his angels. And he's, gone there, he's headed there anyway. But for the sinner, for the person that doesn't know Jesus, the only reason that they're going to go there is because they didn't receive the free gift of eternal life. The wages of sin is eternal death, but the gift of God is eternal life. A gift is something that you freely receive. I want you to freely receive this gift. We all here at Abiding Faith Christian Center want you to receive this free gift. We want you to enter into the kingdom of God. And when you leave your body, because everybody's going to die one day, no matter who we are, after we leave this body, where you go, you, you, you determine whether you're going to go down into a place of torment or up to heaven with God. We want you to go up there with us because we're headed there. All you have to do is do what the Bible says. It says in John 1.12, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons or daughters of God. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says it this way, that if thou should confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you will be saved. Because see, Jesus died on the cross, but when he died on the cross, he went down into a place of show in the earth for three days and three, da three nights to pay the penalty of Adam's transgression. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead. Well, if you believe that in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, and you confess that with your mouth to God, you will be saved. For Romans 10.10 10 says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's why I want to lead you into a prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me based upon what the Word says to do, and you will receive the gift of eternal life. Don't pray it just to ape and imitate me, but pray it because you mean it and you believe it in your heart. Because it says, with your heart, you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth, confession is made unto. So with every head bow here now, those of you here, for any sinner, any person that's not born again here this, to, this morning, or those of you on Facebook, bow your head with me right now and pray these words. You're going to be saying to the God so that he can hear you, the bowing of your head and closing your eyes. There's no spiritual significance to that except that he calls you to concentrate on God and God alone. So say with me right now, dear God, I come to you now just as I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son, that he came to the earth and was crucified on the cross for sin and that he died and he was buried and on the third day I believe you raised him from the dead so I could be saved I accept what Jesus Christ did for me I accept him now as my Lord and my Savior and because I believe it in my heart 
and I've confessed with my mouth. I am now saved. I am born again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for saving me. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. The reason why we're clapping our hands enthusiastically because the Bible says the angels in heaven are having a party. They're rejoicing over one sinner which has repented. We're having a party also because we, we, we crashed the party. We, go, we become a party crashers just for you. Listen, I have a book in my hand. It's a free gift that we want to give to you. You've already received the most important free gift of salvation. This book here will tell you what you just did. It'll take you to the Bible and explain to you and show you the Bible and the scriptures that I quoted will also be in this book to refer to the Bible. It's a free gift that we want to give to you, but all you have to do to receive this free gift is call the telephone number at the end of this broadcast. That telephone number on the screen was going to be 810-515- 1286 that is 515 1286 remember also the area code of 810 you have to dial prior to those numbers so dial we got people by the phones right now they can answer your call if there's no one to answer your call then leave a message and a voicemail and we'll get back with you leave your name your address so we know who you are and we'll send you information for for our church abiding faith christian center because now that you become born again you need a good church home to attend and i have one i can recommend and that church is what saints Abiding Faith Christian Center. You guys missed your cue, praise God. They're not paying attention. All right. It's my lovely wife, Pastor Patricia Hamer, with the pastor of Abiding Faith Christian Center family. I want to remind you that the book of John, the 15th chapter, verse number 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. God bless you, and we'll see you real soon.